the good news is we're all in this together. And when we see we're together, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special broadcast of Energy Week with George Harvey and Tom Fennell. And what we are doing here is interviewing Valerie Stewart, or maybe she's interviewing us. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think I just don't ask me any really tough questions. No, on energy, no really okay? tough questions. Okay. Valerie is running for um, the Brattleboro District One. It's really in effect, George and Tom West Brattleboro. Bra West Brattleboro. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the House of Representatives. Yes, in I've been in the House for eight years. Yep. She's been in the House for eight years, and I think she knows her way around the Capitol building. Absolutely. Yes, I <laughs> absolutely do, and I hope to see you up there soon. Do this yeah. biennium, actually, George and Tom. You guys As representatives? Well, I don't know about that. Anything's possible these <laughs> days, you know. If but, I were uh, a representative, I'd have to run against Tristan. <gasps> no, then you probably shouldn't do See that. This? Tristan's yeah. a good man, but I know. Well, <laughs> I'm a good woman, and I have a primary now, don't I? So, yes, you do. You know, so um, it's a we, little unusual, but... But hey. we want to find out... Um, what has been happening in the government of Vermont. Yes. Actually, we had a story today mm -hmm. um, about the fact that the greenhouse gas emissions are, are increasing from Vermont despite our goals. Right, right. And so what's right. going on? And But also, right. you're going to have things that you just want to talk about. Absolutely. And um, I really, you know, I, I, I tell you, one thing you can... Uh, uh, I think people know about me. I rely on experts on the ground like you guys, really. Yeah. You actually clearly know more about <laughs> energy than I do. I mean, all, all, most of us in the state house, we have to, we, you know, our area of focus is on our committee in the house. Um, and the House does the heavy lifting. The Senate is on two committees. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can't spend quite as much time on each bill as we do right um, which is just you know the way it is and that's that's fine but uh, so my committee is House Commerce and Economic Development so I can tell you guys what I have worked on uh, that uh, to mitigate climate change but on very specific issues like the one you just cited George I would actually request of uh, my chair well he just retired after nine years of being chair of House Commerce and Economic mm -hmm. Development he's in his mid 70s was in the House, I believe, for 14 years. Really incredible man with, uh, brilliant, you know, went to Princeton and, you know, just... Uh, Who is that? Bill Bozzo from okay. Pownall. And he was right. also, he's an artist by background. So he's a very eclectic, very interesting guy, very hard-driving chair. But I would ask him, you know, could George and Tom come in and speak about why? <laughs> no, seriously, because we, we well, rely on people like you, you all you know, uh, one of the things that I've heard about Vermont yes. is that it's one of the few places yes. that, that a person who wanted to yes. could actually meet yes. everybody in the legislature and the governor in one year. <laughs> oh, really? I've never heard that, but I'm sure I'm sure it has been done. Um, <laughs> you know, I haven't met with that person that I know of, although maybe, you know, but I, I do meet, you know, a great thing about the State House is how accessible and open it is. And I was just thinking exactly. I mean, yeah. you go up to the State House, oh. you just walk around. Nobody's you walk involved. around. That's right. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, and, and, you know, you, you two may not know this, but it's one of two. It's technically a museum. So it's a real honor and a privilege to work there. Because In a museum. Yeah, and I'm a creative person. <laughs> so it's, a, it's technically a museum. There are only uh. two in uh, the United States. Uh, so that's, and there's a, a gentleman named David Sheets who would tell you it's a museum and you can walk around with a wand like in a museum yes. and look at all the uh, you know, paintings and such. For instance, every governor gets to pick his or her own portrait. Just right. Portrait, you know, I, was, I was kind of aware of the fact that it was run like a museum. I didn't yeah. know that it was formally a it, museum. It, it's technically a museum. Yeah, and I've, that's why it's open to all summer long and all of that. And um, I mean, it is a real, it's just beautiful. Remember when they redid the White House? Well, some years back, um, I don't know if you remember, but I think it was, um, it, well, Jackie O was the one who really took the White House and refurbed it and everything. Right. But our state house was also, you know, refurbed a little and brought back to its uh, 
technical beauty and glory in terms of the carpets are exactly, you know, the color they were and all of that. Yes. So, but and it's back, been insulated too. Yes. <laughs> well, and as you may have noticed, Circe's was taken off of the beautiful statue who was, uh, she was uh, carved out of wood and she rotted. So, uh, and I don't know the whole story, um, but y you could look it up and it's really an interesting one. And so this is funny, you guys. So during the, you know, three veto sessions to get the budget <laughs> passed, well, the second one, all of a sudden people are looking up in the state house and um, the dome had been removed because we weren't supposed to be there in June. And here we were in June. We were like three or four yes. or more weeks past. Usually we try to adjourn to save taxpayers money. Right. At the end of the first week in May. But here we were in, you know, mid-June, so they had done some refurbishing of the Golden Dome. They took it off and they Cersei's off, so it was open. So we look up and there's a bat flying around <laughs> and around and around. And everyone's sitting there and it was just surreal because here we are, you know, all exhausted trying to get this budget over the finish and line. now you know why the legislator, <laughs> legislators are all batty. <laughs> God help us. Yeah, well, there's some of that, too. But the, the committee that you're on, Valerie. Yes, yes, yes. What is the committee again? Uh, so it's House Commerce and Economic Development. So my platform, George, and the reason I would like people to reelect me is because I still have a lot of great work to do. And we've already done a lot of great work for, and one of the areas, which is germane to your show, is climate change. Right. We are uh, on our committee. Yes. Big backers of the fact that renewable energy. Yes. Yes. is, well, I'm, you know, very vocal about this. I'm probably the most vocal person on the committee. Um, <laughs> but um, about the fact that in 2014, we created 17,000 renewable energy jobs in this state. That's yes. more jobs per capita than any other state in the union. And I think I know what you're going to say. I, I say? honestly didn't know that. Yeah, um, actually, Governor Shumlin used to uh, report that. And, um, you know, you can, it's hard to look up the exact numbers because um, they're split up like solar or, uh, I don't know, transportation or, you know, where we're. Um, and of course, you've got efficiency in that too. And efficiency and all of that. These but are green jobs. These are green jobs. And my big belief is, um, is why I'm wearing a green dress, is <laughs> we can be the green energy leader in the United States, we, along with we, California. We should could be. be we if, should be. If we absolutely. had. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And right now, you know, we've got, fortunately, and I don't want to go too far down this yes, because yes. it'll be a rabbit hole. Yes, no, I know. We've got some really interesting people yes. running for nomination for yes. governor yes. who are very knowledgeable on this. No question. And no it, question. you know, this is real leadership could potential. No could, question. Could be, I'm just gonna adjust could my be. seat here. Yes. Well the thing about it is though is that um, you know Governor Shumlin really was prescient, I think, and he appointed a global climate change cabinet. Yes. It was actually a cabinet. Then that morphed under Governor Scott into, you know, it was good news, but it was just a different iteration, in my opinion, of a, you know, similar <laughs> assignment, which is a, a Global Climate Change Commission. Mm -hmm. um, so, but both of those entities, um, whatever you want to call them, they are focused on climate change because as we know, having seen Tropical Storm Irene, right. we were not prepared. Nobody was really prepared for Irene, but nobody was prepared for Hurricane Harvey or Maria exactly. or Irma or Sandy or... Exactly. And you know, I, I would have brought this book, but I lent it to somebody. She's working on my campaign, Marjorie Shriver. But um, it's a book by a gal named Meg Little. I think her last name is Riley. There's Joe and Ann Little. Uh, they, they used to be my constituents. Now they've moved to Demerson. Okay. And the title of it is, We Are Not Prepared. And it's a novel, but based on a lot of what's happening climate change-wise. And this gal worked for Obama. And remember, Obama said climate change is the biggest threat, threat. that faces humanity. Seems to me Bernie said that, too. Bernie said it, too. And you know who else says it? Who? And this is surprising. You may not know this. I said this on the House floor because many people do not know this. The U.S. military. 
Oh yes, absolutely. You would they've, know that. I they've mean, got but many other many lay people don't. You're very well. You know, it's because right. because I'm focused on this for hours are. every day. I know. But you know, I it's see this thing. over and over and again. Yes. The Pentagon sends people to congressional committees, yes. and the congressional committees are full of people who are climate deniers, and they right. they want to be able to say we're patriotic Americans. Right. And they're right. completely flummoxed when right. they discover that. <laughs> it's shocking, really. Yeah. I mean, and, and what's, you know, interesting is just, um, you know, uh, this is the, the kind of the, un the surprise factor that the military's all over this, but lay people aren't. I mean, you know, I, I have a daughter who's in the military, but I've always been very skeptical about the military. Mm -hmm. I did not encourage her as a woman to go into the military. In fact, I discouraged her mm -hmm. because I saw the ravages of the Vietnam War on some very right. good family members and friends of mine when mm -hmm. I was a young, young girl. I was, I was like a 60s kid, but I was a little kid in the 60s. Yes. <laughs> but I was around people in Virginia that were 60s, like, you know, one of them was drafted and he came back, he was never the same. So anyway, that's a whole nother rabbit hole, as you say. But um, the long and the short of it is, our daughter is a first lieutenant in the United States Army, and the military is all over the fact that, um, you know, scarcity of resources. What what does that cause? Scarcity of water, scarcity of food. Well, you, you have a, you have serious problems come out of that. And as a matter of fact, right. the Iraq War. Yeah. I thought the um, uh, White House, George W. Bush, was in serious error and yes. his his military staff was in serious error yes. because they apparently did not make any yes. plans to right. restore the infrastructure they had destroyed during the war. So right. they'd bomb a bridge, but they wouldn't replace it. They And th what they were taking out was electric power plants and water uh, treatment facilities, and this meant... They never replaced them. And they never replaced them. So what does that do to the people? It, it makes people, people really the hate victims. you. It makes the people no hate question. you. No question. And, and so they? why, you know, all of a right. sudden we've got a problem with, with ISIS or yeah. whatever you want to call it because right. the name went through right. a bunch of iterations. Exactly. One of the problems was they didn't have anything else to do, you know. And when you when you're in ISIS, because yeah. well, all, uh, listen, all of this, all of these radicals are, you know, a lot of them are, you know, when you look at the, some of these countries that have been radicalized, they have an incredibly high unemployment rate of young men. Yes, nothing for them to do, nowhere for them to go, and what does hopelessness breed? It puts you in a situation where the value of your life becomes low. Exactly. And, you know, a crusade to rectify and go after the, what do they call us, the what, Satan? The, I can't remember the, the moniker. But, but please, I don't, don't believe that. ever I don't accuse believe. a Muslim of going on a crusade. Oh, <laughs> oh true. That's, you mean because that's Catholics, right? <laughs> that was or the whatever. Inquisition. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's oh, like... Look, all religions, you know, go through... I mean, it's why I, I, when I was young, I had a real, real problem with religion because, you know... But anyway, <laughs> back to climate change. So um, one of the um, cool things um, I did in mm -hmm. the legislature mm -hmm. with regard to climate change is... Um, I went to, I love the Vermont Council on Rural Development. I'm sure let's, you're well let's, aware. Let's hold that up so everybody I'm can I'm sure you're well aware of can Paul Costello. I don't want to have, oh yes, of course. He's a convener of yeah. the vision for Vermont. I, I can't even remember when that was, Tom and Give George. Me this one. Maybe, maybe I can hold it up a little bit. But better. it's the Vermont Council on Rural Development, or VCRG. <laughs> you can go online and look there at you go. all there the, you go, Tom. All yeah. the great things they wow, do. Wow, and you even did it without a reflection. But Paul Costello, <laughs> <laughs> very good. You guys are getting the tech down on, absolutely. on filming. Absolutely. We filming. are smooth, absolutely <laughs> slick. <laughs> this, this whole thing of being, the, what is it that you call us, the frickin' frack of, or quick and black <laughs> of, of energy? Absolutely. Well, anyway, so Paul Costello, I have great admiration for him. When I first moved here, he did, do you remember the vision for Vermont? It was like Vision for Vermont, and he conducted, his organization conducted roundtables all over Vermont. And I went to several at the River Garden, and it was all about what, do you, Vermonters, see as the future of this state? What do you want the state to be? Yes. And, you know, just a great vision to thing because, you know, by default, states become things they might not want. So if, oh, you're, yes, in, absolutely. if you're intentional about what you want to create in life 
and in an organization. It's, it's like a mission, right? So it was like a mission statement. And they put together a report and thought leaders. I remember Ellen McCullough Lovell and all sorts of really thoughtful, mm -hmm. very, you know, people with incredible backgrounds. And then people like me attended these forums, they were just, you, you attended if you wanted to, and if you wanted to weigh in. I love that kind of stuff because I'm a creative well, we person. We do that a lot person. in Vermont. Well, we do, and I think it's a good thing because I think it really helps us get where we want to go, and I think where mm -hmm. we can go, and coming back to the Vermont Council on Rural Development, my idea at one of their climate economy sun summits, mm -hmm. just my idea, I only came up with the idea. I didn't execute it. I didn't do anything except come up with a really good idea. And the idea was we had breakout sessions at this uh, Vermont uh, Climate uh, Economy Summit. And he, the VCRD, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, did several of them, gentlemen. And um, at one of them, we did breakout sessions. And the breakout session on marketing, I went to that one because I have a marketing background and that sort of thing. And, you know, I worked in New York for 14 years, and first publishing, and then brand and corporate identity, but I was the PR and marketing person for a 50-person firm. At any rate, so um, I just thought, what better way? We're trying to attract young people, families, entrepreneurs, business people. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to uh, keep our state from graying too gray, you know, going too gray. Mm -hmm. um, Although we, it's great to have, you know, now we're finding out that older people actually, you know, with some resources and that sort of thing, they have some time, they want to give back. This you know? is absolutely true. And so it's, it's like a lot of things, it's a little counterintuitive, but back to the, um, the idea, it was just to have a national summit here that would put Vermont on the map as a clean, green state where young people, entrepreneurs, people who care about the earth and the future would come to the summit, we'd get publicity nationally, mm -hmm. and we would uh, hopefully start to stake out our ground. And we already have, I mean, Burlington is repeatedly named as, uh, yes, you and, probably know and better than Burlington I. Is, Burlington was the first city of any size yes. in the United States to be 100% renewable. Yes, 100%, and, and yes. Greensburg, Kansas, Oh, really? Uh, I don't know about that one. Well, Greensburg is <laughs> is technically a city, but yes. it's got a population of 750 oh. or 800. Oh. And so that is, a, is you know... It's a the, tiny town. Well, yeah, but, as, a, as a town, it's tiny, but, yeah. you know, it's yeah, yeah. technically a city. So Burlington, they can say we were the first city, or we can they can say we were the first city that's actually right. the size of a city. Right. But, you know, the people in Greensburg... Had, did incredibly good work, and they they love to Neat. say, Greensburg is a hundred percent powered by wind a hundred percent of the time. Amazing. And the, you know they they this was a city that you yes. might remember this about twelve years ago. They were absolutely destroyed by an F five tornado. Oh oh okay. Ninety five percent of the buildings. They turned the lemonade, lemons into absolutely. lemonade. Absolutely, and they I'm, they lost a large yeah. part of their population mm -hmm. because they moved away. I think only one death. But they had, they, they were, they were prepared for when it came to hunkering down in a tornado. But yeah. you know, when ninety-five percent of your buildings are gone, oh. it's not not easy to deal with things. But they, yeah. you know, here we've got a city that has no zoning against um, uh, uh, wind turbines in the city, so people are putting up wind turbines in their backyards. <laughs> How? They, they just love them. It's like surreal, but cool, right? <laughs> it is. It's um, surreal, but it's cool. There's there's a wind turbine mm -hmm. at the Kiowa County Hospital mm -hmm. that you have to walk under mm -hmm. to get from the parking lot to the entrance. Wow. <laughs> now that really is surreal. Wow. <laughs> if I, it's, I hope it's a quiet one. Well, I, they aren't I, particularly quiet. That was that particular wind turbine. I think is. I don't know. Maybe it is. Be. It could be. But I know that's one of the big objections. Well, speaking of Burlington, back to Burlington and yeah. off of Kansas. Kansas. I can't believe Kansas. I'm thinking Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Dorothy. You, I was born in Kansas. Oh, you yeah, were. Absolutely. Oh my God. You yeah, and I was directly across the street Jesus. from the farm that she lived on, and I woke. I I lived in a place that was. It was black and white until, you know, she got out of that. Oh, get out of here. You're so silly. I hope no kids are watching. They'll probably be like, wow. I believe that. Mom, is that true, Dad? What do you think? 
Well, I, I was how, born in Atchison, Kansas. But. How neat. Well, anyway, our, you know, the great agricultural heartland of the United yeah, States. Yeah, well, we've know? got a great agricultural heart, heartland here. No question. So back to, so speaking of Burlington, so this, my idea the nat to have, uh, you know, a uh, conference here that would showcase all our renewable energy jobs and all of the cool energy things we're doing from NRG systems to seventh generation on and on grow solar go solar down here the Echovation hub whatever yeah. so um, it was a it ended up being a they planned it the national the uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development and it was a three-day conference mm -hmm. and attracted 500 people to Burlington mm -hmm. for three days and they were uh, entrepreneurs and investors, venture capitalists, and thought leaders. Uh, you know, many of them from along the East Coast, but um, a bunch, especially of the uh, thought leaders and the speakers were mm -hmm. from California. Mm -hmm. So that they had some very illustrious um, people talk. You could actually, if, if, if your listeners are interested, um, uh, the, uh, let's see, the uh, website would be, uh, you know, vtrural.org. Um, HTTP. Yeah, well, just say vtrural.org. Yeah. vtrural.org, but it's called the Catalyst of the Climate Economy. And the third day was super cool. I went on the leaders tour, and what it was was <laughs> no, but it was leaders of of, of uh, creating jobs, like you know, companies. Um, the names are escaping me. There was a solar one. We went to the Burlington Airport. The top floor they've turned into. Um, it's like got all these solar panels on it, and yes. you can. You can rent sections, like you could have your section for, you know, George Harvey and Co. And then Tom could have his, Val could have hers. In other words, they're like rental properties. But, you know, the Burlington Airport, the top of it was just vacant. So it was an asset that could be utilized. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stuff, it was just really cool. And uh, Deputy Secretary Ted Brady went on the tour. And so did, you know, people. You could pick other tours. You could pick a tour that suited your interest but it was just amazing so that third day they had buses set up and you went to you know just a great thing for vermont and it was at uvm so you know it brought people into the state from out of the state showed them what a great town burlington is what a great facility and university uvm is so it was just a win-win-win brought tourist mm -hmm. dollars into the so you know so that's the kind of thinking that i think in this state now i've got a question yeah, for sure. you. after peter shumlin mm -hmm. left office yes. Yeah. Our position as a yeah. national leader right. seems to have eroded. Yeah, well, he was a big lead. He was, he, you know, I think, quite frankly, leadership starts at the top. And, you know, Phil Scott has his strengths, affordable housing. We all knew we needed to, you know, crack that nut uh, because, you know, you know, I think housing is a human right. <laughs> you know, well, it should I mean, be. It should yeah. be housing, Every, everybody, healthcare. You know, food, I, just security. think about this for a minute. You know, think, there are certain right. things that people should should be human rights. Sure, sure. Let's just start with maybe the most obvious. Everybody should have a right to clothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And food. This is no, but seriously, societal thing. If a person yeah. isn't clothed, right. you got a problem because he's going to be running around naked. Right. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Well, we had that problem in our town until we passed some certain. Didn't we I, pass? Yeah, we, we did. But the but the thing is, the point is, it's not just it's clothing. Yes. Yeah. And for reasons that are actually kind of similar, but not so obvious. Yeah. You don't want to see naked people running around. You don't want to see homeless people no. around. How do you make sure that no homeless yeah. people are around? Well, you could yeah. be really mean yeah. and drive them out of town. Yeah, no, I don't believe in any of that. No, but, I don't think or you could, you could see do. that they have homes. Right. Well, we have to create a more just society. I mean, that's, you know. Uh, there's no question the, about this in my 60s. mind. The 60s, mine either. And you know what? The thing is. Now, I want to tell you, Valerie, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I broke no, that, in on you. Oh, that's okay. I want to tell you, I voted for Richard Nixon twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I voted for Gerald Ford. Yeah. I voted right. for Ronald Reagan twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah I no, voted no, no. For, for George Bush twice. It's I voted to for, go down the, for yeah. Bob, Bob Dole. I voted for George W. Bush. The reason I didn't vote for him twice was because I could see that the Republican Party on the national level right, was, was di denying climate change. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, as I'm looking at this, yes. and I'm looking at climate change, sure. and I'm looking at the, the economic effects, mm -hmm. I'm still conservative. I'm still a re conservative Republican. I like the idea that That's Republicans put together the first federal 
um, wildlife reserves. Yeah. Uh, oh. Did so much oh, for yeah. the National Park Service. Listen, R yeah. real, real Republicans Bipartisan, you know, are, it's the only way to go. Yeah. Real, if you don't have yeah. a multiple party system, bipartisan, tribe, whatever. Whatever. But, but if it's if it if it gets into one party controlling everything, it's not a democracy yeah, anymore. Right. And this whole, you know. But the yeah. point that I'm making is, as I've been looking at this and I've been thinking about yeah. the fact that our society has been so subverted. Oh, no question. By it's terrible. The fossil fuels industry, it's I so, believe. It's tragic. Yeah. It, what I mean, they're for the doing earth, for our children and grandchildren. Yeah, but what they're doing humanity. to this country. Oh yeah, no, I know. Our last election was subverted by the Russians. The Russians. Yeah, we know that. Our last no, election was subverted by Freedom Partners. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. put eight hundred and eighty nine million dollars they announced yeah, no. into getting their people into politics, which meant that they were they were leveraging the right wing of a Republican Party no to control question. the There's Republican a Party, yeah. leveraging that into control of the federal government, yeah. and they were doing it for their own purposes. It's, you know, the thing is, I went to, so last fall, I went to, it sounds really dry and terrible, but it was actually incredibly interesting. It's called the National Council of Insurance Legislators. Oh, I love this. Uh, but, but insurance touches everything. It's it kind sure of interesting. Does. I mean, you know, uh, climate change and storms and you know even what happened here some people still haven't recovered because their buildings they can't get insurance for they can't sell them I mean we have a friend in this town um, I won't cite the name because you know because I don't know that that would be appropriate but has a building that it's just been terrible for this individual who's a generous philanthropic lovely person and cannot sell the building because it, it can't be insured and it got devastated by Irene, mm -hmm. and the individual had to refurb it and all that. So now it's being used for good purposes, but um, the person needs to reclaim and sell the building, but they can't get insurance. So there are these problems, and then drones and cars and Uber and um, you know, air, just insurance touches everything. But anyway, where was I going with that? It was in Chicago, and I had a point. Um, I stayed in Chicago. I went to this insurance, insurance legislators. Thing. Yeah. Now I'm, um, and and there was there wasn't enough probably on. I and you all, I would encourage you to look into this because I think it is really. I've I've actually looked into you, it, Valerie. Yes, as a matter of fact, that's really where I, I was going. Cause I I talked to the to better. the representative town meeting on this. Oh and, yes. Because I and I've got some statistics right in my head. Yes. Um, I mm -hmm. what I did yeah. before the last town yeah. meeting was I looked at the cost of insurance premiums for, for flood insurance for all properties in the United States. Okay. Now, Interesting. what had happened was um, the, the, those costs have been going up. Now, you'd expect yeah. that between 1978, which is when I started, oh, my, my thing uh, started, yeah, yeah, and yeah. 2015 when it ended, right. I actually looked into, okay, the property values have changed. The 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 uh, population has gone up, which means we've got to have more buildings. Right. We, we have so an with broader increase. base. You would figure the cost would come down, right? Is that where no? You're going? You, it would go up because be, the total cost for all of the buildings would go up. Yeah, but I mean, when you amortize a cost across. This is the total cost. Okay, you're talking total. Yeah. Okay, got it. And 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 in and inflation, you'd expect that the price of uh, the va the cost of insurance would go up by a factor of about five and a half okay. from all of that. Okay. It went up by a factor of 43. Yeah, right. Why did it go up by a factor right. of 43? Because buildings were being destroyed, property was being destroyed oh, see, at I a see, faster and faster oh, rate. See, see, and the insurance industry is couldn't getting, they couldn't keep up. Now we have in the middle That's of really this, interesting. you know, I, I spoke okay. of this to somebody who is more to the right than I am. And he said, well, more people are living in, in vulnerable areas. And I said, okay, look at this. We had the National um, uh, Flood Insurance Reform Act, of, I think it was 2003, right. which said if, you, if you've been, uh, if you've made two cli claims in excess of $1,000 mm -hmm. within a 10 year period, there's no guarantee. Because the federal government had been guaranteeing flood insurance. There was an. Oh, uh, I see. A, so they backed off it. And they, no, they, the point is that these, these buildings are not being, they're not being covered by insurance. Right. 
So the cost of insurance is not, is not going up because of them. Right, yes. And of right, course, right. Donald right. Trump should know this because he's got sea, seashore property. Right, right, right. right All right? right, right, right. And so you, where, is the, where, where, is, where is the money going? The money is going to cover the cost of the damage that's being done. Okay. Somebody had to pay for the damage yeah. uh, of the no-name storm that hit Louisiana right. in 2016, which I forget the name of the parish down there, but you know, their, their oh, county yes, site. They had a, they had a parish in so which 90% of the houses yeah. were, no, were was, damaged. That was horrible. And uh, only 5% of them. Remember the people, you know, mostly people of color, you know, waving and, you know, from the tops of their houses. And it, it was, it's Bush tragic. Bush just didn't act it's tragic. at all quickly. And yeah. it was really a and travesty. The, and the, and a, Hurricane Harvey. Appropriate response. We had we had Those people were not helped in an expeditious right. manner. Right. We had houses that were destroyed that in Hur terrible. Hurricane Harvey because that of flooding yeah, 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 in yeah, areas yeah. that were not even in 500-year yeah. flood areas. Well, the thing about it is, is even even these horrible things we're talking about. If we're creative as a state and as a people, we might be able to figure out how we can help. You know, I mean, I don't know how this plays into it. I'll just throw it out there, you guys probably would know more than I do, but we have a really robust green building sector. Oh, here. we sure do. Echovation, building green. Do you know Alton, Guy Payne? Gerilyn Wilson, yes. Absolutely. Guy Payne has got something. his, his green building tour coming up. Well, so I convene, for seven years I've convened the Wyndham County Legislature. Mm -hmm. um, delegation, rather. I always figured we delegation. were a team. Okay. I always figured working as a team, for Wyndham County. Right. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> anyway, we won't go there right now. It doesn't feel like there's much of a team spirit At the going moment. on with certain people. But anyway, I've always been a team player, and I always figured uh, strength in numbers and also, so, you know, you, if you want, you guys want to come up and talk about, you know, Wyndham County delegation, we think this particular bill is a really great way to mitigate the statistic you mentioned earlier, which is the rising transportation emissions, you know, that are somewhat counter to whatever. So I convene the delegation twice a month in Montpelier on a Thursday, a couple years back it was on a Wednesday, when our Wyndham County uh, people can come, our senators mm -hmm. and our um, reps. And so uh, that is a really good way to, um, you know, work as a group to like bring up uh, Gerilyn and Alex Wilson from Building Green and you know, how can, uh, we didn't, I, they were always invited because they do such spectacular work, but um, they are very busy, so they didn't take us up on the invite. Uh, yeah. But the point is, is um, I think we can figure out some innovative ways to help mitigate the flooding and all of the things that that book Meg Little, I re referred to early on, we are not prepared. It, it was a novel and it was about, you know, here we are living in a, um, uh, the Littles had a cabin up north and so it was kind of her childhood recollections but vis-a-vis -a, -vis a fantasy town where global, uh, where, where, excuse me, where a flood comes and it's like people are like, you know, I mean, destitute and without food and neighbors and and, and you know, it, and it's rained and rained and rained. It was a great, you know, and this was, she wrote it, I think, while she was still with the Obama administration. Then she left, she published the book and I lent it to, like I said, my... One of the things that I bring up Friends. over and over again, because mm -hmm. it happens to be true, mm -hmm. is that in one week, mm -hmm. in I think 19, uh, 2014 mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. um, NASA oh, mm -hmm. said the United mm -hmm. States could be hit by a coronal uh, discharge that, uh, would, that uh. would close the grid down nationally uh, yeah, for three yeah. and a half years. Yeah. Uh, FEMA yeah, said yeah. we could have a terrorist attack on, on 11 yeah. locations that would shut down the national yeah, grid yeah, for a yeah, year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Ted, and then, Koppel, Ted Koppel, Ted, Ted Koppel he's did written a, a book on that. Yes, I met that's him right. years ago um, when I worked in New York. Um, I used to do the yes. March of Dimes and I um, raised money and bring a check to yeah. various uh, news people. Well, he was the guy one time. Yeah. Ted Koppel did that and you know, if, I didn't read the book. But the yeah, word that no, I got I haven't was read the that it was, it was a very good book, but it's certainly available to anybody he's, he's who wants. He's very concerned about that issue. 
as great, am I. The and it's a very good. It's a very good. And then, terrible. and then, of course, in the same week, yeah. we had a third thing, which yeah. was North Korea came. You know, yeah, they yeah, came yeah, yeah. back and said, "Well, we have a nuclear bomb, and we know where to put it." Right, right, right. And they could do the same thing. Right. Our grid is vulnerable. There's no question. And There's our no question. entire economic system is vulnerable. Right. And it could crash literally overnight. Well, you know, this is this is different but similar. It's somewhat analogous, to tell you the truth, you guys. So in um, House Commerce, for the past two years, we've worked a lot on uh, cybersecurity-related matters. Right, that's and another one. And there are more, um, the Equifax breach, I don't know if you remember that. Yes. I actually wrote an article um, how people could protect their personal information. Um, we, on House Commerce, we did four hearings around the state, different right. places in the state, south, north, east, west. And it was about, um, you know, people's information being hacked. So we had, um, you know, older people, um, you know, their life savings were stolen you know, through hacking and, um, mm -hmm. you know, identity theft and on and on. I mean, just unbelievable. So and the shocking thing is there are three different, um, uh, you know, a, like security, kind of cybersecurity entities, um, inter Interferion, Experion, and they have these odd names. But at any rate, you had to pay. If you were breached and they called you up and said, hey, George, your information has been breached, you had to pay like $10 or something to shut down, to kind of shut off the bloodline for them to, you know, keep pulling in the threads of your, you know, identity or your bank account or what have you. So we changed that and we said that people, Vermonters, should not have to pay to protect their own personal information. But cybersecurity at that um, National Council of Insurance Legislators I went to, yes. um, it was a big issue because yes. I've even heard it at our local bank, um, the Brattleboro Savings and Loan, because um, and also at the state level. So um, I don't really fully understand it, but I guess if I run Medicaid and the state wanted to verify that I, Valerie Stewart, was indeed uh, eligible for Medicaid, somehow they um, might uh, need to solicit my records from Brattleboro Savings and Loan. So um, when those two, um, you know, uh, kind of entities connect, so to speak, online, um, if the state's, ener not energy, um, the state's information is not secure, um, that can, you know, kind of the corruption can run right into the little small bank yes. and vice versa. So this is happening at small retailers, state levels, whatever. So it's a big area. In fact, my son, who's 27, he now works at Uber. He thinks Uber's going to save the world, driverless cars and fewer cars. <laughs> a lot and, of people think that. I know. And, you know, I mean, you know, there's the, the jury is out, but, um, you know, God bless young people who have hope for the earth. There's, there's a lot of people we trying a lot of things. Absolutely. We're in a, dis, you know, uh, what we talked a lot about on House Commerce, you guys, was um, the disruption in the economy, the gig economy. But that's good. I mean, there are going to be growing pains with that. But, Absolutely. But it, 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 disruption in the, if you want to look at disruption, it's happened over and over again in the past. Yes. I mean, in the United States, we yes. had a disruption when somebody yeah. invented the linotype machine, and all of a right, sudden, exactly. you know, we had a disruption when when uh, I used to work above a place where they designed typefaces. <laughs> International Typeface Corporation. ITF. ITF. I yep. mean, I'd ride up and down Ed Bengiet. There's a there's a typeface Bengiet, and you know, my father-in-law, he's a graphic designer, and he, you know, they laid the type, the little, you know, I mean, the yep. world is, changes so so rapidly. Speaking of which, I brought this cute little prop. I showed it to Tom, but when my kids were like six and eight years old, I yep. gave them, and I, I think it's really, you know, the, young people are the future. We all know that. You know, yes. we're all in our you know, Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So this book I gave to the kids when they were six and eight, I've been worried about the earth for a long time. When I worked in New York, I mean, John and I have lived here almost 25 years now. I read the New York Times Mm -hmm. cover to cover mm -hmm. on my way in to and from work. I was a commuter, you know, so was my husband. And so we lived in Pelham, New York, most recently. Um, but anyway, so the Union and Concerned Scientists had a little teeny blurb, and it was about, you know, in the future, we're going to have more disruption from climate change events, and, you know, um, we're going to have more storms, floods, et cetera, et cetera. And my dad, who I've always considered very, you know, um, uh, 
kind of he, a lot of forethought. He, or he foresight. He went to Cornell on the GI Bill. He was a mm -hmm. poor boy, you know, made good. He, you know, mm -hmm. he now lives, you know, um, in Santa Barbara, California. You know, he's mm -hmm. a veterinarian. But anyway, it was all about pet nutrition, and he was always, you know, ahead of the curve. But when I told him about the Union of Concerned Scientists thing, he just kind of poo pooed me. You know, I. I I've, they used to call me worrywart when I was a little girl because I worried about things. So he just thought it was a worrywart value. You know, she was just worrying about this. But it's all come true. The Union of Concerned Scientists well, yeah. was right. That yeah. was 25 the, or 30 years ago. The first president to be yeah. warned by, by scientists yeah. that something was going wrong with the climate? Right. Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. What did he say? I don't know what he did about it, but he didn't do enough. Oh, he, do you, th you know. think he believed it? Or? I don't know whether he believed it or yeah. not, but this was 1965. Mm -hmm. The President mm -hmm. of the United States was mm -hmm. warned, about, warned about climate uh -huh. change. And that, 1965? Yes, wow. and that That's, was after was the kid, climatologists, yeah, yeah. I don't think there were climatologists, no, meteorologists yes, in, right. in those days, had been investigating the possibility of this starting in the 1890s. Oh, really? They've known about this oh, they have? for that's, a long that's time. You know so much and it has been idea. suppressed. Interesting. Yeah. It has been suppressed on a, on a systematic, purposeful basis. Purposeful basis. Of by and you know I mean we we've talked about Willie Soon who was a the scientist who was paid a million dollars over uh, a ten year period very rough figures to write peer reviewed articles oh. on saying that climate change was not happening as as a result of mm -hmm. of um, human action wow. and of course those articles didn't go into journals on right. meteorology or climatology. Yeah. They were they were went into places where they were not reviewed by climatologists and meteorologists. Oh, I see, I see. They went into journals of astrophysics. Oh, interesting. So you know <laughs> the people who were who were well, reviewing them oh, interesting. were were That's really interesting. and really this actually happened yeah. and and yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Uh, Exxon Mobil was one of the uh, organizations that that. Uh, paid into that and money from, mm -hmm. again, it may have been the Koch brothers, it may have been Koch Industries, mm -hmm. it may have been Freedom Partners, it Terrible. was one of those. Yeah. They were paying for this. Right. And it, honestly, I think that we've got to a point now where people are dying because of this. Oh yeah, no, I know. It's a lie. Oh yeah. And people are dying. And what and Asthma it's unnecessary and for them to die. And, you know. What what do you call it when you kill somebody or when right. somebody kills somebody right. unnecessarily right. to make money? Right. What do you right. call that? Right. We All did right. some of that in, you know, we <clears throat> we talked about some of that in the legislature this year. It was really terrible. You know, Vietnam former vets who are serving now, you know, one of whom has terrible PTSD, and he's very forthright about the fact that he thought about taking his own life. Um, you know, um, napalm. You know, oh. I mean, all of these chemicals that we tested on our own people. We, I have a neighbor, Ed Luida, people around here would know him. He worked in the post office. He was married to my good friend, Mary Holt. Um, you know, he was napalm, you know, he, he died he of Parkinson's. It. Well, there's kind of there's a class action suit they're trying to make it happen, but you know it's very hard to you know, work against the Pentagon you, and chemical companies that test yeah. their products on our fellow humans. Do you recognize the name Audie Murphy? Audie Murphy, no. Audie Murphy was the most decorated soldier oh. in the history of the United oh, States. Really? Wow. He had yeah. every decoration oh. for valor that oh. this country oh. offers, oh. and yeah. and then some Amazing. because he got them yeah, from yeah, other yeah. places. Wow. He became a movie star, oh. and in one of the things that he did was he portrayed himself. He did his own biography. Oh. He portrayed himself in his own biography his own in a mo in a movie called Selfie. Even then, a selfie movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah to Hell and Back, yeah. and Audie Murphy oh, after the Second oh. World War had PTSD oh. so badly oh, yeah. that he woke up screaming every night, oh, yeah. and his wife couldn't deal with it, so he had a divorce, and he would not even attempt, apparently, to sleep unless he had a loaded gun under his pillow. Oh, ja, that's amazing. All right, now, what yeah. we're talking about here is people being injured. Right. And, and right. actually, people are being injured by all kinds of things. Oh, no question. And climate change, climate pollution, change happens to be one of them. Yeah. And, you know, one of the statistics, <laughs> I have, n I, I remember numbers. I don't remember names very well, I remember oh. numbers. One I'm of the, the opposite. One of the statistics <laughs> I, I remember is that 
the, the um, American Lung Association in California yeah, yeah. did a study that in which they looked in specific to mm -hmm. 10 states that had mm -hmm. very similar laws in regard to electric vehicles. Yes. And the uh, group of states in the Northeast, the, what is it called? Um, oh, the, oh, the region? Like regional the, yeah. Greenhouse Gas Reg Initiative. Reggie? Yeah, Reggie? Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, yeah, which Reggie includes Vermont. Called. They looked at all the, yes, all of the yes. states in there, yeah, so there were really 10 states. Yeah, Reggie, and yeah. What they found was in in the state of Vermont, the cost of me, of me, medicine uh, f oh. resulting from transportation, oh. uh, the use of of oh. fossil fuels in the transportation transportation industry in Vermont, just in Vermont, was three hundred and thirty million dollars a year. So are we? Uh, is so my we question? We talked about that. Yeah, show. this is four hundred and eighty dollars per person. Yeah, but so. I think what you're saying, if I'm hearing you, George, is are you saying that these are maladies that are caused by, um, you know, uh, transportation emissions and such in the environment? In so the, if yes. I have asthma, it makes it worse. Yeah. Well, if I'm you on have lung cancer, it makes it worse. Caucus in yeah. the house. And and so. If that's forty nine percent of our right. of our yes. of our uh, uh, right. uh, fossil fuel use mm -hmm. is causing four hundred and eighty dollars per person right. of damage, which yes. means that a hundred percent is going to cost about a thousand dollars. We're losing a thousand dollars per person because of the medical costs associated no with question. fossil fuels. Well, and people yeah. are unaware of this. If you have a family of five, yeah. it's no, and, and of course it's coming out of insurance and it's coming out of taxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm a member of the Climate Caucus. I yes. have been a very, you know, at, uh, you know, a staunch advocate for, you know, climate yes. change everything yes. since I've been in the legislature. And, you know, um, because, like I said, for a long time I've worried about this, okay, for my children, my grandchildren. Not yes. so much for me. You know, we're the past, they're the future. I mean, you know. I worried about it for myself well, when uh, I started no question, worrying no about question, it. No question, but know. I'm just trying to put it in stark, which is, yeah. this is the, you know. It, I you worry know, about my grandchild. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the Climate Caucus, um, we have had, and in fact, I um, am going to set up, and I just um, have been too busy since I got back from the legislature, you know, because we got out late, and, you know, I've been very, very busy with this primary I have, but the long and the short of it is um, Rebecca Jones, she's a dermatologist, and yes. Dan Quaid, he's a health care, he's a health advocate, and so we want to put together a forum here where uh, Dr. Rebecca Jones, she can talk about, um, you know, she's burned stuff off my face all over the place. I have a dent in my nose. It's because she thought it was, you know, a problem, you know, burned. You know, I'm Irish, French, and Scottish, so <laughs> <laughs> lots of luck with the sun. I actually just try to stay out of the sun between 12 and That's 3. That's what I, I do. Try. Well, I try. You know, putting on all this stuff, I really don't like that and whatever. But anyway, you really should put some on even if you go to your car because, you know, um, but so uh, we're going to try to uh, set something up, but um, healthcare, we've heard a number of things about people with asthma and all the different deleterious effects on health uh, of climate change that are occurring now. So, so we know this. And um, it's actually another reason, you know, a lot of times it seems like the best argument for legislation, in my opinion, is how we can save money by doing this. And I mean, one of the ways we can save money is by, uh, you know, reducing the, the harmful effects of, you know, oz less ozone in the atmosphere and all of that on people because it's costing all sorts of money in human capital, meaning lives, as you mentioned, yes. and in, you know, pharmaceutical and doctor and all the other ways that we try to address these problems. So, um, you know, I'm pretty all over that. That's why this little book, put this little book up, uh, 1,000 no. <laughs> Ways to Save the Earth. Uh, we kind of talked about it and then we got off it, but I gave it to my you. kids when they Here were we six go. and eight because I wanted, oh, oh I God. felt like we could all make small steps to save the <laughs> earth. And so you're going to have to put yourself up there, Tom. You're not in the. Oh, I'm not, not the, even up there. Yet. You're not up there yet. When when the children were small, I gave it to them for Christmas because it just has there all sorts of small go. ways. You know, I think as people, we have to, and certainly as legislators, as a legislator, I really believe we have to give people hope. We have to give people means well, to address the ills that, you know. And so, I mean, the last thing we can do as leaders 
really, I think, or we should do, I think we need to give people hope and we need to help them address the problems that are here yes. with, with, with some possible solutions. And I'll just tell you one last thing. As an individual, uh, whenever I've been worried about things, I, I was very worried about the nuclear weapons freeze campaign. I was very mm -hmm. active in that. I actually was arrested. It was, uh, um, you know, passive resistance. You? You've yes. been, you're a representative in our government and you've been arrested? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's really true. It was the Chinese embassy and I, West Park Church. I actually was looking for the book because um, it was, you know, at that point I thought nuclear weapons were going to be the end of the earth, quite frankly. I have a book over in my backpack. They could very well still be. Well, of course they could. They could be, I mean, but, you know, the, we've got, we've got a, a <laughs> we've got a problem here that, yeah. that is, is in motion. But, but yeah. let me just make it clear that this was passive resistance. Oh, I, yes, of course. I, I, never, I understand. Well, I, was I know, only, but your I was viewers being, may not, and I, I want to make sure that they, I know. <laughs> I'm not make sure they don't think I was convicted of anything. I mean, we went limp. They brought us down to the police station. They did not book us. But some of us went to the Chinese embassy. Some of us went to the Russian embassy, embassies all over New York. Mm -hmm. It was a church, and um, we did a book, and William Sloan Coffin, was the fabulous nuclear weapons freeze campaign leader. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I, we used to go to the Unitarian Universalist Church mm -hmm. in New York, where William Sloan Coffin And Universalists preached. believe everybody can be saved. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> that, and that's a good thing. I, I figured that's why John and I went there. No. Well, if I could, <laughs> if I could sure. mention something here. Of course. We have all of the technology we yes, need yes. to stop climate change. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is probably the single scariest thing that yeah. has ever come up before humanity. Yeah, no, I know. We're not doing the work. I know. It's, the government of the United States is kind of like what the government of the United States would have been if in, on the 10th of December 1941 it said, no, the Japanese didn't bomb Pearl Harbor. Right. You know, right. I mean, basically, right. that's where we are. We're in this it's denial surreal. thing. It, it is bizarre. It's surreal. But because, that's the leader again. But, Leadership well, it's the leader the and it's the people who paid followers to take positions. Well, you that's know. true. But they, right. with ca campaign contributions. Well, that's but true. The, but the thing is, we've got all the technology. Yeah. We really can. And not only that. So that's what Vermont has to embrace. It is make the happen. single biggest business opportunity no ever to come up before that's humanity. That's what I believe, and I know that for a fact. It, it's and just, it's bizarre. We've, we're being blocked by not 1% of right, the population, right. but 1% 1 of 1% right. of the population. Right. It is that very tiny it, group, it's subset. It's the robber barons of the 21st century. It's the robber barons who are involved in fossil fuels. Right. There are other robber barons, and right. maybe or maybe not, that right. They're, right. there's something well, reprehensible in, about them. We but know, yeah, we know in California, I mean, the fossil fuel guys, what did they do? They blocked public transportation, right, left, and center. California would have had They destroyed it. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there are books about that. We all know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did not want that to happen because... You know, when I was in college, we read a book in my political science class. I'll never forget it. It's called Global Reach. Okay. And it was by, his last name is Muller. I, I can't remember his first name. But anyway, it predicted that global corporations would pretty much run the world. I mean, you know, the, and this is the half of 1% in the oil industry and then the others in other industries that you're talking about, that they make the laws they you know, um, and it's, you know, now we have an oligarch in the White House. I mean, you know. But we've also got, for example, Ceres, the nonprofit organization in Bo Boston, C-E-R-E-S, oh, oh. has been going oh, from one was. country company to another saying, if you adjust the way you do business with, an, with a view I to see. sustainability, I see. you're going to make more money. Oh, that's great. And they've great. been going into that. that. Sounds you really should. Interesting. Their um, the companies that have signed on with them mm -hmm. have assets worth about thirty trillion dollars. Amazing. So this is, and it includes General Motors, Amazing. and it includes Ford, and it includes Coca Cola. Exactly. It just goes down this list. Nike is involved, and you know, there's all of these. And then on top of that, you've got as as much as I dislike certain things about Amazon. Yes. Amazon is going to 100% renewable energy. As much yes. as I dislike right. uh, things about we Walmart. Can't paint anything with us. And one brush. and if you if you look at this from a certain point of view, you can see that companies yeah. 
are and and not just companies but uh, organizations, mm -hmm. uh, municipalities, counties in some cases, right. are putting efforts into going to 100% renewable. Right. And if you think about that from the point of view of competition, yes, for fossil fuels industries, yes, all of a sudden you understand why, yes, the Dow Jones Coal Index, yes. dropped from right. you know 735 right. yeah. to 35. Well, see, companies go where the money. I don't the think money. they have it anymore. No, they do. Companies it's got go one company on it, Mur <laughs> Murray, Murray Energy. Well, we've so about so it, companies yeah. go where the money is. And you know the marijuana bill, that we, the big bill that yeah. Jeanette White worked so hard on, yeah. and, you know, a number of others, but to really create a framework for marijuana and that sort of thing. And then, you know, then there was a lot of concern, rightly so, I think, that, um, uh, you know, American Tobacco and the big tobacco companies were all following marijuana legalization. Why? Follow the money. So they saw that there would be an industry. So they wanted to get in, you know. Of course. And, you know, what we don't want, we don't want that in Vermont. I don't want that. I want marijuana legalized. In order to keep people from being prosecuted for something which really should be their own business. As long as they don't have a child in yeah. the house or the car um, or drive or, you know, it's like alcohol. It has to be reasonably used within the confines of their home in a safe manner. And one of the big sticking points, as you probably both know, were um, how to test for, you know, if you smoke a joint, I smoke a joint, and Tom smokes a joint, um, you know, different people react differently to the amount of, you know, the marijuana. So um, uh, uh, there was that piece, and then there was also the piece of, you know, these big companies wanting to come in and do it the not Vermont way. And we, <laughs> we don't want that. We want it the Vermont way. I mean, you know, um, and, you know, so uh, anyway, that's a whole nother thing. But what I'm saying is that companies follow the money and, um, you know, the climate change conference that, you know, I, was my idea that the Vermont Council on Rural Development pulled off this past fall. The third day, there was a pitch session and, you know, by um, like 11 companies, I remember there were a couple guys from Northeastern, Green Gas, mm -hmm. you know, all these different really cool ideas. And um, Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, Ted Brady, said that um, there were like three billion, three to five billion dollars in the room of entrepreneurial capital. These are venture capitalists who are looking to. So I'm, I'm going back, you know, to your point that there is a lot of um, money potential to, money to be and, made, and it's why I a big part of my pla platform is climate change because I'm worried about the earth. Like mm -hmm. that's why I gave this little book to my children to give them hope that they could help solve this problem through actions both large and small but also um, you know because I think it's a great opportunity for Vermont what better state and then we, we can keep absolutely Vermont, Vermont. We, we've got just in Wyndham County yeah. we've got we've right. got um, Hub and, uh, Sion and all of these organizations yeah, no, um, you you mentioned Alex Wilson and, yes, and of so course, forth. Yes, Carolyn. Yeah. All of the, and we've got other organizations Green that Berkeley. are not very far away. Exactly. That that uh, it, if you think about green building, you could start a green building university in Brattleboro. Yeah, that's true. If you wanted to, yeah, well, you really could. We have a circus school. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, well, we have the second know. biggest in this in the nation. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, there's one on the west coast. We have a trapezium. Who has that? Little tiny Brattleboro. I mean, people but come. From little all over. tiny Brattleboro or Rutland, anything, or or right. Montpelier or Burlington, that you could put together uh, uh, a state universities that were yeah. devoted to. I love that. Actually, you know, that's a great idea. And I think that if Peter Shumlin's be vision, founded by George Harvey. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> founded by George Harvey in you know 2020. He had 2020 vision yeah. on the future by founding this. <laughs> But well, but the silly. point that I'm making is I think that if Peter Shumlin's vision of right. the future right. were were followed, right. what we would have would right. be that kind of thing. Right. And that, um, uh, if you just think about it, what, what the 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 amount of money that would be made out of exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, even if it were entirely supported by the state, 
and and well, taxpayers look at what we did with efficiency Vermont we've efficiency I Vermont mean, we're it's a perfectly good it's a, it's absolutely just amazing absolutely but if you did that you'd have thousands of jobs created Valerie we're you know, we're, yes. get, we're yes. getting to the yes. end of no, our I hour know. this has been really fun I'm glad you enjoyed we've it covered, we've covered the uh, a lot of ground yeah but you know that's it's I'm going to introduce you again thank you very much okay this is Valerie Stewart. Valerie is a representative from Brattleboro District 1, which is West Brattleboro, in the House of Representatives in um, Montpelier in, in the legislature. And she's running in the primary now. Yeah, I've been elected four times, and I hope to be elected with the support of my many, uh, my many uh, supporters, uh, again, for a fifth time, so I can continue to uh, uh, pursue the vision that I have for Vermont, which is to create a brighter future for our children and grandchildren. Thank you.